Hi, I'm Matt Moran, and you're watching Career Builder Toolkit TV. This is episode two. And today we're talking about how valuable is your value. Now, this comes up typically when people start talking about what they're making or what the average salary is of a given job or a given skill set. And oftentimes it's portrayed in terms of a negativity. They'll say, I'm not making the average salary or I'm not paid what I'm worth by my company. And they'll, they'll kind of go on um, being frustrated or complaining about what their company is paying them. And so there are a couple things I want you to understand. The first thing that's critical in understanding the idea of how valuable is your value and how that uh, impacts your career choices is the idea that you have to understand that a job is simply an agreement between two parties trading value. There's the employer who's giving pay, perhaps benefits, a place to work, and the work to do. And then there's the employee who's giving their time talent, effort, uh, blood, sweat, and tears, some people might say. But the, the fact is you're just trading, you're just trading value. It's just two parties trading value. And so what you first have to understand is that you're not bound to that agreement. You're, you have the choice of either changing the agreement, if that's possible, and if not, finding a new agreement, finding a new job. And those are the two choices you always have. So the first thing is you're not stuck in that position. And, and you have to kind of get out of the mindset that they owe you a certain degree of pay because that's what the rest of the, the industry is paying. So, and we'll get to that point in just a moment. The second thing is that average salary is a bad indicator of, it's one indicator, but it's not the perfect indicator, let me say. It's a, it's a poor indicator of what you should be making at any given job. Because first of all, you have to understand that if average salary based on salary surveys means that there are people making less and there are people making more, probably a lot of people on either side. So the first thing I tell people is don't strive, strive for average. Striving for average is not what you're hoping to do. And the second is you have to assess the position by other things. Are they giving you responsibility, new tasks to learn? Are you uh, given the ability to have some autonomous decision making, for instance. Are you making vital connections in a job? And I, I use the phrase often that I tell people, sometimes you trade pay for opportunity. I'm not saying in all cases, believe me, I want you to make the money you want to make. I think that's fine. But just understand that average salary is not the best indicator. The second point is that the value is not just about your skills. And I use this analogy. I, I do a lot of automation work, Microsoft Office automating document assembly or reports in Excel. That's a lot of what I do. And that's a high value task for a number of companies. But if I take my skill set to a one PC mechanic shop and it's a four year old PC and he hardly ever uses it, no matter what my skill set is, he's never going to recognize that value. He simply can't pay me what I think I'm worth. So if I go to work for him, our perception of the value I bring and, and the what he's willing to pay for that value are very different. So I'm never going to get what I want from that person if really I want to get paid for the value I believe I, I bring. So you need to find employers or clients who share the same value on the value you bring. You have to view them, there has to be an agreement there. If not, you're just going to end up being frustrated and always feel that you're undervalued. If your employer does not value does not place the same value on the skills you bring as another company, you're better off finding that other company. And that's an important concept as well. So it goes back to the idea of employment's just an agreement between two parties trading value. If they don't value the value you bring in the same way that you do, there's always going to be a disconnect and a frustration. Um, so how does this impact what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? As you go about your job, you need to assess, assess your opportunities or you need to assess your career or you need to assess your clients in terms of a greater understanding of how they value the value you bring. You need to find the places where you can connect the value as closely as possible. And if you do that, you're going to end up being a lot more successful in getting the kinds of jobs you want and just a lot more satisfied with those jobs. Thanks.